Yay! New video here on this channel, and what is it on? The Iceberg Chart. For what topic? <laughs> Black Metal, of course. From my understanding of what the Iceberg Chart is, because I've seen it been used for topics such as creepypastas and horror flicks, it's a chart that we're not really comparing what we think is greater or less than certain artists or platforms or medias within the topic but more as what's considered abnormal and abstract for the topic. And I figured black metal, with the vast majority of sounds and styles you'll get out of it, perfectly would have a lot of variety to be worked on with an iceberg chart. How this chart is going to work is, we started off with the easy stuff, the accessible stuff at, you know, tier one. And when we get to the final tier, which is tier six, usually there's eight tiers, but I narrowed it down to six tiers. That's where I would consider the most abnormal, the weirdest, wildest stuff you can get with this genre that really pushes just the sanity level, I guess, is the best way to put it. So again, it's more as to what is considered, you know, abstract or, you know, against the grain of what we consider black metal to be. So we started off at tier number one. And also keep in mind too, um, it's not gonna be tiers on subgenres within the subgenre of black metal, like we're kinda used to with the genre tags. It's more gonna be on categories that kinda rounds up certain styles together. So just keep that in mind. It's not gonna be stuff that you're used to hearing. So at tier number one, I call it pretty black metal, which is usually stuff that you would introduce to a friend that's not really familiar with the sounds of black metal, but you're not going to hit them with a straight up black metal approach. You kind of got to ease them in with bands that kind of play around with the genre in a more accessible way. Bands that I personally feel like fit this kind of category is Alcest, you know, mixing both black metal and shoegaze together that has more of that pretty sound that fits the category quite well that, you know, every once in a while he'll have black metal moments, especially during the early albums, but definitely a great place to start if you want to get your friends kind of used to the sounds of what black metal can create. Then there's Summoning, which, you know, I know I'm being a little bit biased, but I think, again, fits the whole pretty epic, I guess, sound for this because I've noticed that Summoning is a black metal band that's not really meant for black metal fans. It seems like a majority of people that actually do like Summoning aren't black metal fans because they appreciate them for the compositional work and the triumphant grand sound that they'll create that I think personally they fit within this tier. Love them or hate them, Death Heaven is another one, which I know I'm gonna get shit for that, but again guys, it's the pretty black metal category that isn't going full throttle, and Death Heaven has gained a lot of popularity. And again, as I stated, whether you love them or hate them, I feel like they've gotten a lot of people used to the term black metal. I guess you can also throw in uh, Wolves in the Throne Room. They seem to get a lot of attention, that whole Cascadian sound that a lot of people find to be breathtaking that's also introduced a lot of fans to the term atmospheric black metal. And final addition would be Hakiri for the Sky. You know, I've noticed the more I listen to them, when you take away all the aggression, all the screams, all the shouting, all the blast beats, all the reverb with the guitars, and you just look at the basic writing within the band itself, it's really kind of like a post-rock band, their execution, but with the power and aggression of black metal and post-black metal kind of, you know, layered upon everything, which makes their writing style, again, really fit this whole kind of like pretty black metal sound that overall is very solid, and even their latest album that was dropped about a week ago is awesome stuff. So Akiri for the Sky, last minute addition within this category. Sliding down the iceberg, we go to tier number two, which I call Carrying the Spirit of Black Metal. These are typically going to be bands that are just black metal straight up. Nothing more and nothing less. Typically, if you were to search up the term black metal within any search engine, you'll get these bands first. And just to save my breath, because I'm pretty sure every person watching this knows who it is, 
Norwegian black metal, obviously Immortal, Emperor, Burzum, Dark Throne, Mayhem, you know, stuff like that obviously would fit this because these are the bands that really influence countless other black metal bands to carry the spirit and keep the tradition alive for, you know, the basic foundation of what black metal would be. Other bands, too, that are more modern day that fit this category, first one that comes to mind would be Magua. They have a shit ton of exposure over the past recent years that I would say in terms of modern black metal bands are kind of like at the forefront of popularity. Then also as well, too, there is Watain. I know I'm not really crazy for them, but again, I think they perfectly fit the description for this category. Also, Dissection is another one that comes to mind. And a few others, I guess, for last minute editions, stuff like maybe Marduk, Dark Funeral, and some of the Finnish black metal bands such as Sargeist, Behexen, Horna. You know, again, just typically black metal bands that just carry the spirit of the old for modern day. With the two first tiers out of the way, this is where things get more challenging now as we reach tier three and move on downwards into this icy pit. Tier number three, I would call the bestial black metal, or war metal if you want to call that too. This is stuff that aggression makes up everything about these bands. It's either your balls to the wall, hellish, obnoxious, heavy, all the time, or forget it, you don't fit this style and you go up to the other two tiers. Stuff that comes to mind would be, you know, maybe Blasphemy, Revenge, The Herit, stuff like that. All the ones, too, that I want to give a bit more description on is uh, Demir. And while this band only did one release, I figured I'd talk about it now here on a video like this, because it seems like my collection videos don't get as many views, that um, this is a war bestial, I guess if you want to call it, to black metal band from Lebanon out of all places. And that is a worn, torn country that has, you know, very die-hard religious fanatics that if you don't believe in the religion, you're basically shunned out of existence within that country. And what makes them such a standout for me is not only did they make a really, really solid EP, but this is the only bestial war metal, black metal, I know it gets all crazy with the terms you want to use here, band that I think is like legitimate hatred. Most other bands that play this style, it's not really legitimate to me, the emotion they give off. It's more like a flex of, hey, look how fast we can play, look how aggressive we can be. Fuck God, Satan's my daddy, so I hate Christianity. Like, every bestial war black metal band comes off like that. Demir is the only one that it's like legitimate emotion and hatred being thrown at you here. Because no matter how many times I listen to this release by them, there's that part that everyone always brings up if you know it, where it, you know, basically has this chorus. can just say, alright, it's a catchy chorus, Wyatt, and he's just saying, do you wish to die over a dozen times. But what makes that so legitimate to me is it just feels like this is him, like, really feeling and unleashing the hatred and misery this individual is having while living in Lebanon. Because think about it for just a second, okay? This is a country that if they were to see a band like this sound like this and look like this, they would probably be executed or at the very least shunned out of it. This is a country just full of, you know, religious fanatics and war. This is not really an environment that's healthy or, you know, happy-go-lucky. Hey, I can say, fuck you, God, hail Satan, and nothing bad's gonna happen to me. This is a place that they will legitimately kill you. So for a band to have the 
balls to release something like this. It just has more of like legitimate hatred other than the flexing type of hatred that other war metal bands have. And it sucks that this is the only thing they did because after people found out about it, there's a lot of rumors and all these different forums saying of the things that's happened to the band members within this. I've heard rumors that some of the bands uh, fled the country to Australia. Other people have said that some of the members have started a pop punk band, believe it or not. And others have said that they've converted back to the religion, which I believe is, what, uh, Muslim or whatever over in that country. So, or Islamic, I should say, sorry. Islam back within that country. So, whatever happened, it sucks. But this is like the only war metal band that comes to mind within this category that it's legitimate hatred and not flexing hatred. As well, you have stuff like Pseudo God, Titan Blood, that's just basically, you know, 260 BPM all the time, no matter what, even during the slower parts of the tracks. And another one, too, that I wish, just again, more people would listen to, I understand they didn't do much, but damn, this band is so fun to listen to, is Naked Whipper. Definitely, if you're a Blasphemy fan, you've got to check this out, but Naked Whipper had more of like a grindcore edge to it in a certain degree, but man, maybe if this band was just, you know mean to death like every other war metal band, people would actually give a shit about them. But I just want to give a shout out again to Naked Whipper every t chance I get because this band kills and so many people are sleeping on this band regardless if they haven't released anything like two decades. It's just loads of fun to listen to this band. Check them out. Descending downwards we go within this iceberg. We reach tier number four which I consider to be the oddballs of black metal, typically stuff that's either experimental or avant-garde. Two bands, obviously, that come to mind, just going to name the big two out of the way, Decibel Omega and Blue Dow Snore are the first two, mainly because, you know, so many bands try to capture the style and just writing that both these bands have really mastered over the past couple of decades that they've been active Ludolf's Nord of the two is more experimental, I would say, as they seem to really change it up more often, blending so many different styles together that each individual album, they completely shake it up. So I'll give them that, but Despel Omega, I feel like, is the more influential one, I guess, mainly because everything that's like considered dissonant black metal always seems to get traced back to Despel Omega, plus they're just crazy, spiraling out of control vortex of riffs that they unleash upon the listener is just something to behold. And man, time and time again, just so many bands try to capture what Despel Omega can do and just fail miserably at it. Then there's Juke Gite, which I've always given this project the cold shoulder mainly because I'm kind of turned off by all the different releases that this band has. Like, I think this guy will release something new like every couple of months, like his discography is huge. But it's definitely another band that showcases just all the weird, wacky, crazy ideas you could throw upon the listener, blending noise and you know, all different styles of experimentation that really pushes, again, the limit to what avant-garde you know, experimental black metal can create. As well, there's Diapsa Choir, which I don't know why before I always called it Diapsa Choir. Probably mispronounced it wrong, like always. But Diapsa Choir, I had its own video for them, you know, calling them the weirdest black metal band that I know, and I still stand by that. Diapsa Choir, it's just, their writing makes no sense at all. Like, no matter how weird or crazy, you know, black metal artists are out there, it's like when you try to connect point A to point B within any track out there, there's like a cohesive thought being presented to you. But with Diapsichor, it's like, it's like the, it feels like they're always tripping over their own feet with every song that they create. That listening to them is equivalent to watching a guy run a marathon and it seems like he's always about to fall on his face but always catches himself at the last second throughout the whole marathon and finishes the, the race. Like, that's what it feels like and looks like listening to Diapsichor with anything that these guys do. And 
There's something to behold if you ever were to check these guys out. Then there's Mama Leak, which, once again, it's another one that I want to call it experimental black metal, but again, I'm not really sure because it's like every little song, not even released song, is just like, what are these guys on? It's it's creative, yeah, and every release they're like experimenting with so many different styles of music that I even think more genres of music that really pushes, I guess, experimentation upon black metal to a whole new level that really only Mama Leak is doing. Like, I don't know what to compare these guys to other than just to give you an idea of the genres they play around with within their catalog. It's like trip-hop, jazz, musical concrete, industrial, shoegaze, like, name a genre, basically, and they played around with it in some type of way. And, again, they're another weird, strange oddball within this category. Now we have reached tier number five, which I put as the necro tier, or the raw black metal bands, basically. This is usually stuff that, you know, is tin can production, the ones that usually turns people off to the style of black metal, because a lot of people just think every black metal band sounds like these bands that I'll be talking about. That first up, I feel like, are the group that really started this whole attitude and style for, you know, what we would consider raw black metal nowadays, which would be the Les Legions Noir, the LLN, stuff like Mutilation and Vlad Tempe's, that it is just dismally raw to the bone, stripped down as it can get, nothing fancy here, that if you were to show someone who's never heard of black metal stuff like this, they would never want to listen to it again because they haven't really adjusted their ears, I guess you could say, to what this style can be. That I remember um, checking this stuff out when I was getting, you know, accustomed to what black metal could sound like and immediately being turned off by it. That I definitely do feel like it's one of the more inaccessible ones when you're at least new to it. Maybe a lot of you guys watching this think that it's, you know, basic raw black metal now, but for newcomers, stuff that have never heard it, it's definitely quite the turnoff for people. But I definitely would say the Les Legions Noir have really started what a lot of modern day raw black metal bands try to copy, which the whole attitude is like, you know, hey, we hate everyone, we don't want to be in the public's eye, black metal's not a trend, fuck you who buy this, but make sure you buy it for 20 bucks if you want to get an LP variant, you know, like, stupid shit like that. <laughs> that so many bands now you can basically attach them to with this, uh, you know, tier, stuff like Obscuritatum, Black Solis, Sordalagia, Moonblood, I guess you could call them, would fit in this category too, and a lot of one-man black metal projects, stuff like maybe Zaster, Leviathan, Drowning the Light, you know, it's just very raw, hateful, nothing fancy, to the bone, black metal, and that's basically it. And for a lot of people, this is where they kind of stop now, because they look at it as like, this is primitive black metal, it can't get any more inaccessible than this, this is as, just as, you know, deep as the well goes for what is considered inaccessible. But there is one more tier that I feel like people just try to pretend doesn't exist. <laughs> oh boy. Now we've reached tier six, what I call dark web black metal. This is stuff that I really don't expect you guys to be thanking me for talking about because it's just so inaudible the stuff that comes from bands that play in this style that I can categorize them under, that it seems like they try to make black metal as inaccessible as the genre can allow, that it's more like audible torture than really anything else. Which, I feel like personally, the black metal project that kind of invented, I guess you could say, this style of blending black metal in a very weird way, mixing it with 
power electronics, noise, and dark ambience is, of course, abruptum. Oh, God, like, this is, like, really unwelcoming sounds. I don't even want to call this music. Like, abruptum has such an odd, vile way of making black metal that I feel like every project that kind of blends noise and dark ambience together really takes a lot of influence in some type of way from Abruptum. Plus there's the backstory too with this band that all the recordings and albums that they've done while being this very harsh, abrasive style of black metal is that with all the recordings they self-mutilated themselves while doing everything. That's all rumors. I can't really say if that's true or not. For all I know, that could just be type of like some backstory or gimmick to help sell their music, I guess. But overall, it's like some of the harshest, most vile ways you can make black metal that really just pushes the listener and I feel like mental capability of the genre to its limits. As for some of the bands, I guess you could call it that, that take such influence from this that fit this category is one that comes to mind is Sudiketh Hexen. This is another, again, I really feel wrong calling it black metal. It's more like a power electronics noise project that somewhat attaches black metal with their sound. Like every once so often, maybe they'll have like a black metal riff here and there with the guitars if they ever decide to use it or some vocals that are very similar to that of the shrieks of black metal, but again, it's more of like power electronics. Like, think of as if Perorian was more open to the idea of playing around with black metal. That would be Sudiketh Hexen, but again, I just feel so wrong calling this black metal. It's more like a very slow burn, noisy, dark, ambient project that is just so vile and just harsh and, again, very unwelcoming. Then you got, in this project always, <laughs> so ridiculous the band name, then you have Semen Drenched Slave of the Devil. <laughs> Such a ridiculous name. This is a very anonymous type of project that has released very few, I think they only have like two releases under their belt, and I'm not sure if they're active or not, but this is just, again, the very vile, harshest the genre can sound that it's basically just reverb the whole time. It just sounds like someone agonizing in pain for its whole runtime, no matter what you click on by this project. That I feel like if there is a hell and you're supposed to be tortured for the end of eternity, it would just be this project on a loop the whole time. Oh boy. After that, <laughs> we got Emmett. I've only listened to this project maybe once or twice that is just borderline, not even borderline, just straight up abruptum worship from start to finish, only he decided to just make it even harsher. That th this picture perfectly depicts what it feels like to listen to this project. It is just so ear-piercingly harsh that I can just feel my brain turn to mush every time I listen to this project. That this is like, as... <sighs> this is like where it really crosses the line as to where you start to wonder, it's like, what am I listening to? What What is going on here? Like, this is where Black Metal gets to the absolute limits of what it can do in terms of vile harshness, right? Like, if you really want the full-on blitz of dark web black metal, as I call it, listen to Emmett. Uh, all right, so with all that out of the way, that's what I would put as the iceberg chart for black metal. If you have anything similar to that stuff you want to add, by all means, let me know in the comments below. And yeah, that is that. So like always, guys, thanks for watching. You know, and, and as a quick reminder, make sure you guys drink water to stay hydrated and have a great day.